Hey, hello, you're stuck in traffic with Wolf Corral. A few minutes riffing on IT and IT security. Today, looking at secret management, specifically managing the secret to get to the secret, the master key, if you will. Oftentimes, when we're looking at any aspect of security, you can pull out a lot of fundamental truths about it. Um, and secret management is, is no different. We've struggled for a long time to distribute passwords and have instances, right? of applications, of services, of processes, of databases, authenticating the other instances, and doing that in a secure way such that an attacker can't just simply look at the config and go, oh, there's my password, I'm good. So as an example of how to do this and how to work through the pros and cons, we're gonna look at a, a specific setup. The setup that I'm talking about today is gonna to be um, Ansible uh, with the HashiCorp vault. Now, I'm gonna try and abstract this a bit. So if you're using your own type of run books um, and Jenkins, whatever, if you're using your own type of vault, the same concepts will apply. The important thing here is to think about the difference in security. So we start off immature. We put the password into the Ansible config file. Pros, very little setup. Ansible is meant to do that, it's easy. Cons, whenever you roll out an instance of Ansible, you're replicating that password. Moreover, if you're storing that password in a central location like Git, now that password can be replicated to anyone who wants to pull off uh, Git. And we've talked multiple, multiple times about public GitHubs and people searching and pulling out passwords. So, some problems there. Uh, second option, don't put the password in and be prompted for it. Now, people may forget it. You got pa people sharing passwords now. That's never a good thing. Uh, they'll probably write it down because that's human nature. That's never a good thing. People are going to leave and you have to rotate the password. That's never a good thing. So you can add a little bit more complexity to this option by using something like a password manager, like um, Dashlane or LastPass. So the administrators pull that password down, they throw it into Ansible. When you push Ansible out, Ansible uses that password to spin up around the runbook and talk to the vault. All right. Um, now, still on the lines of passwords, what if we were to use something like LDAP? All right, so in this case, we would spin up a virtual machine. Virtual machine would connect over LDAP, and then Ansible will be deployed on it. Ansible would use that LDAP token to authenticate to the vault. Could work, could work. Now we no longer have to worry about you know, a password being entered in by the user, so it's not manual, that's good. We no longer have to worry about a password being replicated by file, that's good. Um, however, how do we get the LDAP password in place? So there's still some challenges to think about there. We've moved the problem, that, that secret, out of channel, excellent, but we still have a, a problem to solve in terms of how we seed it in in the first place. Another option, a fourth option, would be to stop thinking about it as a password, something you know, and start thinking about a token, something you have. So in other words, what if we were to move to a certificate-based authentication? In this case, you'd spin up a virtual machine. The virtual machine go hot, goes hot. Um, when you were distributing that virtual machine image, you would distribute a certificate along with it. And then you use those certificates to log in to Ansible. Now, there's still the concern about, well, what if someone steals the passwords or the, the certificates? You'd want to use something like, uh, you know, put in the key store and use all the Linux protections around certificates. So you would have to worry about that. Um, there's still the fact that uh, you, know, you need to set up and maintain a whole CA. So what's more complex, managing a CA versus managing LDAP? That's really gonna vary probably based on team. <laughs> In my mind, it's LDAP's more complex, but people will probably argue with me. And then really the key thing is, we went from having a password that was distributed in clear text to having a password that was not, that was encrypted or in our memory, to having a password that was encrypted and protected and using an authentication mechanism as opposed to using a password to directly connect to having a token that we could access and pass around that way. And each one of these steps um, has varying degrees of protection from clear text, uh, all the way to certificates or LDAP, uh, and has varying degrees of complexity. And so when you start looking at initial secret distribution, you gotta start weighing those pros and cons and figuring out what the best solution is for your environment and for the way that uh, your applications work. Uh, what do you guys think? Did I miss anything in this conversation? Hit me up in comments or social media. If you're doing secure initial secret distribution too, love to hear about it. Cheers.